Good morning. The Lord be with you. Good. It is good to see everybody today. Dan. That foot really is wrapped up, isn't it? I'm sorry. We're going to talk for just a minute. Don't, don't mind us. I just noticed and how, wow, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, after you had broken your foot, so, so blessings to you. So, wow, bless your heart. Mm. Um, it is good to have folks here today, and uh, we're going to sing, we're going to worship. And uh, just a couple of announcements I want to share with you. Um, we have a blood drive coming up here at the church. That's going to be on the 31st of August. Uh, but if you just can't wait, there is one coming up uh, this week at St. Enoch. And uh, that information is in your bulletin. And uh, so I just want to make sure to uh, pass that along to you. Um, also, there is a church council meeting next Sunday at 945 in the uh, sanctuary. So, uh, so you're, welcome to, uh, you're welcome to come to that. And there was one other thing I wanted to share. Pack of, or the, uh, yeah, for uh, Main Street Mission. August, this August, we are collecting uh, pasta, canned meat, uh, pasta sauce for Main Street Mission. Uh, that is, that is the, the products that we are collecting. You can bring those. Uh, there's information in the bulletin about where you can bring them. And if you would like to, you can also bring them, put them on the back table. Uh, so that'll be our big collection. Their, um, their inventory for groceries and food is quite low this time of year. So um, anything that we can do to uh, make a dent in that would be very helpful. So we want to make sure to include that. Um, you should have a green sheet of paper with you. Um, what we are going to be doing, if you notice during the month of July, I did a month-long Bible study on, um, on Romans. And during the month of August, I am going to be doing a uh, kind of a month-long Bible study in a different form for the minor prophets. And uh, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But I wanted you to look on the back page, and I'll show you the schedule. Um, every Sunday in worship, we are going to focus on a different, uh, a different one of the prophets and then I'll also be taking a different prophet each Wednesday, um, and I'll make sure that, and we'll see that that's on Facebook by 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. Uh, so we're going to cover at least nine, maybe more, um, but we're going to be doing that on Sundays in worship and then Wednesdays on Facebook. So we want to make sure you're, uh, you're aware of that, and you can read ahead, and uh, you can... Uh, uh, use that as your devotion, so, uh, so that'll be coming up this month as well. It is uh, good for us to be in the house of the Lord, so let's take a couple of moments and uh, make ourselves ready for worship.
Let us stand. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, us our, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. and We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me see. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, 1 through 5. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 136, verses 1 through 9, and verses 23 through 26, and we will read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of God, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who only does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever. Who created great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever. And delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all creatures, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Here ends the reading of the psalm. Let us stand for the gospel. In our gospel reading, you're going to hear that, that common theme that we've heard through Isaiah and one, Psalm 136, and that is the theme of food, more specifically bread. And we hear in our gospel of that feeding miracle uh, from Jesus. Now, in Luke's version, we hear a broader, longer story that includes the young boy who brings this food. But this reading from Matthew is just as strong where we see the power, the generosity, and the grace of our Lord Jesus. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. When Jesus heard of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We only have five loaves here and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, just a note before we get started, I know that uh, over these uh, last month or so that the scripture reading I've been focusing on um, comes after the gospel, but I've made sure to include the gospel and the psalm in another reading because every Sunday we need to hear 
from one of the Gospels, and we need to, we need to hear the, that the work of Jesus Christ and the psalm, we need to hear that holy conversation between God and us. Uh, so that's a very important part of, of who we are. So that's a, a reason we have both of those in there. Pray with me, please. Holy Father, this is a good place to be because you are here with us. As we take a look at some of the prophets this month, we ask that you would help us to see where we are in the story, where you call us to action, and where you call us to be restored. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this month we're going to be looking at the minor prophets the one thing I want you to, re to remember is that they are not minor prophets because they have not quite made it to the major leagues yet, okay? They have, not met, they have not yet met the qualifications. No, that's not what considers them a minor prophet. Um, what, considers, uh, what we consider a minor prophet is actually someone that we know maybe just a little bit about, um, and maybe they had just a very narrow focus. Uh, for example, of all of the ones that we're going to be looking at this month, this is not the full scope of them. There are actually about 12. And, um, but they're all very unique. And they're all shorter than the others. For example, the, um, the major prophets of Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, all those together have 130, um, 130 chapters. But Obadiah is very interesting. Obadiah, and I'll put this in front of you so you can look at it. Um, Obadiah has a structure where it's only 21 verses long. No chapters. And it's one of only a few of the books of the Bible that has no chapters. Um, Jude. Uh, Philemon and uh, the second and third letters from John. Not the gospel, but the uh, letters of John that come at the very end right before, um, right before Revelation. So it's kind of unique. So if somebody refers to Obadiah, it's just a straight verse. So it's kind of a simple, uh, a simple and easy read. What makes a prophet a prophet? And what makes a prophet successful, actually faithful, that's the judge in which, uh, that's the rule in which they are judged, is that they have a vision or God has spoken directly to them and they are told to go to a particular place or people and to proclaim the message of God. That's what makes a prophet. It's very simple. They are chosen by God, they are given words by God, and they are given the people in which to share those words. So you're going to hear, even in our scripture reading, and I don't have the whole thing. I've kind of chopped it up so you could get the basic idea. But what you're going to hear is him say, declares the Lord. He's going to make a statement, and then he's going to say, declares the, the Lord, or thus says the Lord. So you know that it's not Obadiah speaking, but it's God speaking through him. Um, a couple of the little bits of info. Um, the time, they think that this was probably around 570, um, give or take a handful of uh, decades. We never really know for sure, but the reason that it's set, that it's thought to be around 570 is that there are some similarities to Jeremiah, the message and the people he was talking to. So a lot of times they think it's dated around that time. The purpose of this is you're going to hear you're going to hear about the people, the nation of Edom. The nation of Edom. Edom is a small country. They are a very small country, but they've kind of buddied and saddled up next to, uh, next to some of the other countries like the Philistines or the Arabians. And now they think they're big. They think they're hot stuff. But what's happened is, is that they have come down very hard upon the people of Judah. So you're going to hear the pronouncements against Edom. Um, the law, where, is, where are the people going um, south? Where are they going away from God? The law aspect of it is they were full of pride and security. 
They loved to pillage. And the day of the Lord was coming and it was a warning to them that there would be fire and exile. So that was God through Obadiah shaking his finger at them. But the gospel, the good news in this is, how about that? I'm giving it all away to you before we even get into it. The gospel is that the day of the Lord is something we look forward to because it's been promised to us in Christ. And that will be a day of restoration for us and will be the Lord's coming promised kingdom. So what you're going to hear is the actions and attitudes is that they're cruel, arrogant, hypocritical, and boy, doesn't this just sound like fun, right? But the one unique thing about this particular prophet is only three prophets, Jonah and Nahum, only Jonah and Nahum pronounce judgment against another nation. All the other prophets pronounce judgment to uh, to maybe an area or to a specific people, but Obadiah goes straight for uh, straight for a nation of itself. Okay, Obadiah. The name actually means a servant, or uh, it's Hebrew for either servant or one who worships God. Um, and you're going to see in this reading, you're going to see four proclamations that God is giving against the people of Edom. Okay. <clears throat> God is exercising his heavy-handedness on a people who have fully rejected everything that, that God has done for them and that God has promised them. And though it may sound strong what God is threatening to do, it's that God loves them. God could let them go on their own way, but God still loves them and wants them to change and return back. The first proclamation, I've got it listed there, verses uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The first proclamation, the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up and let us battle, uh, and let us rise against her for battle. And then here's the proclamation. Behold, I will make you small among the nations, and you shall be utterly despised. That is an amazing sentence. I will make you small. I will make you small among the nations. You can tell that it means a lot that God hears, that the people hear God's will and God's desire there. And he continues, the pride of your heart has deceived you and you who live in the clefts of the rock in your holy dwelling, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? You soar, though you soar aloft like an eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. Now, look at verse 3. Great translation here in how this uh, plays out. He says, you who live in the clefts of the rock. Now, one of the fascinating things about biblical times, and, uh, and especially more so, in, um, even now in how we understand battle uh, in our armed forces, the people of Edom, they lived in the cliffs. They lived in the cliffs and they were very high up. Everything protected them. So when they lived in the cliffs, they could look down on everyone. They had the power and they took a lot of pride in it. And they knew that they could play bully and you're going to hear that word in again here in just a few moments. They knew that they could play bully to the people of Edom. And God didn't like it. And God did not like it because they were literally picking on a people that were not their size. Um, Edom's victory against Jacob. Here is the second proclamation that God's making against them. He says, because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you and you shall be cut off forever and you shall be cut off forever and the next line do not gloat over the day of your brother in the day of misfortune and do not rejoice over the people of judah in the day of their ruin and do not boast of their distress so the second proclamation god is saying you're going to be cut off if you keep it up turn to the lord and that's the message of every prophet turn to the lord 
He's not just saying what God is going to do, but he's saying these things so that they will turn to the Lord. Uh, The next proclamation where it says the day of the Lord is near, verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all nations. And here's the proclamation. As you have done, it shall be done to you. And your deeds shall return on your own head. Now let's pause for a second. That's not exactly warm and fuzzy, is it? That is not warm and fuzzy at all. But we have to understand that God was working with and trying to convert a people that had totally turned their back on him. And not only that, they had tried to commit the most heinous of things toward another group. But here's the fourth and final proclamation. Look at the bottom where it says the kingdom of the Lord. Verse 19, those in the Negev um, shall possess from Esau. So the next proclamation is he's saying to the Edomites, he's saying, okay, here's the thing. The land you possess, it's going to be taken from you. And those of the Shephelah shall possess the land of the Philistines. And I didn't put the whole piece there, but the prophet was saying to them, He was saying to them that all the land you possess, and he just rattled off a list of lands. He said, you're not going to have it anymore. All these things that you see of value in the property, you're not going to have it anymore. Because you didn't treat it well, and you have treated the people poorly. And then the last verse that I've placed. Verse 21. Saviors shall go up to the Mount Zion to rule Mount Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Now we're getting to where the gospel is. And that is that God will restore. And he promises that. So here's what this looks like with us. Because I know none of you came today to hear a total exposition of the Edomites. Okay? You know, raise your hand if you came to church really desiring to hear about the Edomites. Okay? Oh, not one person? Oh, that's disappointing. Okay. The point that God is working through here in terms of with them is the same for us. Is that the people of Edom had turned from them, had turned from God. And God wanted nothing but a relationship with them. But instead, they turned their back and they created atrocities that were not in God's name. And God made sure that if they didn't change, that it would rain down upon them. But see, the gospel is for us, and we understand that now through our Lord Jesus, is that God's desire is for us to be restored. God's desire for us is to be in relationship with him. God created us. God loved us through baptism. God has claimed us as his very own. God simply desires obedience. And where there is obedience, there is also repentance. Um, As I was uh, pulling this together, and it's interesting, things like this, you just kind of work on it in bites all throughout the week. And and then you get to the end of the week and you panic because you just don't quite think it's what it should be yet. But after I put this together, it kind of appeared to me a little bit later that the theme was not even mentioned. And that is, it's about bullying, okay? It's about being a bully. Um, The people of Edom, the Edomites, they were nothing but big bullies. In fact, there's a a little line and uh, there's a reference. And if, if you've ever heard the Napoleon syndrome, the Napoleon syndrome is sometimes uh, where it might be a a person who is uh, Napoleon, for example. He was four foot something. He was not a small guy, but he was a very angry ruler. So they they said that if you're shorter and smaller, that sometimes you'll be a lot more angry because you want people to hear or to see. The same thing with Edom. Edom, they were a small country, but they 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 just kind of lured it over, over these small nations. And I started thinking, well, they're just being a big bully. And um, I started thinking about that as, uh, when I was young, which is always scary because 
I have very vivid memories of my childhood, and I, I can, you know, I see situations, and I have, you know, just wonderful memories, um, but it, you know, one I remember was about a time when I was about eight years old, maybe nine, and um, there was a kid in my neighborhood. Let's call him George, okay? There are no Georges in here? Okay, good. Uh, we'll change the name to protect the innocent parties in this story. And... Um, I remember he lived a couple of houses down from us. He would ride the bus with us to elementary school and such. And, uh, you know, he was a little taller, and he, I'll be honest, he just had a mean streak to him, okay? I am sure he's a fine, upstanding citizen now. Um, but he had a mean streak to him. I wasn't a very tall kid, um, but there was one defining thing about me is that I had deep red hair. Imagine the most orange pumpkin you've ever seen and then add in uh, some fire engine red to it, okay? Big, I had thick red hair. And you know, there aren't a lot of redheads anymore. Um, you know, it's what they call a recessive gene. So, so love your redheads because they'll soon go away, right? I know, that's just what I've always said. But I had this great big thick red hair Look what you people have done to me, right? <laughs> I paused too long when I said that, didn't I? <laughs> I had a little bit of red when I came here. But, but they would kind of pick on me about that and, you know, kind of shove you into a seat, knock your books out. Nothing major, but just enough to really make you mad. Well, he had done this, and then I even changed bus stops one time, and then what did he do? You know, he changed bus stops, because there was a couple of us that he kind of, you know, picked on. Well, one day we had gotten off the bus one afternoon, after school. We had gotten off the bus before him because we just wanted to kind of get out. Well, he was coming down out of the bus, and he missed the last step of the bus. And, and just went face forward, you know, skinned up his arms and his legs. And we couldn't hold it back, but we just laughed. Oh my gosh, that was great. That really felt good to see that. <laughs> but you know, as I was putting this together, and I was thinking about the story and the, and, and, and the people of Edom, and how God was going to come back at them because they had pride and they were all full of themselves, I started thinking, he was a bully. And then I thought, wait a minute, I laughed at him in maybe one of his most embarrassing moments. I was not a whole lot better. I was not a whole lot better. But it was interesting because God is asking, and God is not asking, he is saying that we will be restored. And for those of us who are now on this side of the, the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, we have that full and utter promise that we will be restored. And what a gift that is. That through Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven. Which doesn't mean that we can keep on doing it week after week. It means that God calls us into relationship. We are called to repent and be restored through the promises of Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, we are restored when we are in our worst possible moments. And God calls us to do differently. Because pride and all of those things that he talked about, that loftiness where the Edomites would, would be up in the cliffs and they'd be kind of looking down. You talk about pride and, 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 and all of that. And their pride went to cruelty it went to cruelty and pillaging and all of this type of thing that went fully away from God. But see, that's one of the gifts that God has given us. Where there is Christ, there is forgiveness. Where there is Christ, there is relationship and restoration that we could not put together on our own. And the outline I've given you on the next page, I'm leaving that to you. I want that to be part of, uh, of your study this week on the uh, 21 verses of Obadiah. 
But it's important for us to remember that God isn't just talking about the Edomites here. What are we called to learn about this text? And it's very simple. Is that sometimes we are on the receiving end of the bullying, so to speak. And sometimes we're on the giving end of it. It can look like maybe a relative whose focus on property and money might strain relationships within a family. It could come in the form of a coworker or maybe someone um, in authority at where we might work where that person may make it very difficult to do even simple tasks or maybe looking for opportunities uh, to squash or embarrass someone. Bullying can also look like any time there is an opportunity where it gets pushed aside or squashed by someone just out of spite. God is not just talking to the Edom, to the people of Edom. He's talking to us. Where are we full of pride? Where is it that we can be hypocritical? Where is it that we can stand and maybe be a bit more boastful and looking down on others. What is God having to say about that? Instead, God says that my reign will be near. All the world will be restored. God calls us to be restored with him. And that's the gift. What is it? And I, I think it's so important for us to remember the last line of the Bible in Revelation, what does it say? Because he's talking about here, the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. Even to them, he's saying, things look bad if you don't change. The day of the Lord is coming. But here at the end, he says, all his people will be restored. It will be the day of the Lord. We look at the day of the Lord, the last line in Scripture at the very end of Revelation, it says, come Lord Jesus. We look forward to that day. Come, Lord Jesus, to which I would add, and hurry. But that is our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the promise. And that is the promise we're called to share with each other and those around us, regardless of our status, regardless of what we have, and regardless of who we are. Amen.
As we turn our hearts to prayer, um, make you uh, want to make sure that you are mindful of all of those on our prayer and concerns list. Um, keep that and pray for them during the week. What a gift that is to know that uh, the congregation is praying for them. Uh, one celebration we want to add is uh, to uh, Joe and Shirley Allen at the gift of a new grandchild. Uh, uh, Shirley's son, Ben, that's right, be happy about that, yeah. Uh, Shirley's son, Ben, um, and his wife gave birth to uh, Grayson Lloyd Watts, 9.9 uh, .9 pounds, 22.5 uh, inches. Wow, already getting offers from the ACC, so that's fantastic. So that's wonderful, so God be with them and uh, those siblings and all those special ones as well. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, and Hilda, a great-grandchild, number number five, five great-grandchildren. Okay, wow, and to you and, uh, okay, five, five girls and one boy, so, so blessings to you guys. So let's go to our Lord. In the tender compassion of our God, let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn and bring the glory of the risen Lord who makes every day new. We pray for our missionaries. You are the one true God and you desire all people to know your love. Help all those who believe in you and follow Christ to share the good news of your salvation. Grant that missionaries would be able to spread the glorious word of your mercy and saving power to all they meet. Lord, in your mercy. For a season of growth. Strengthen our faith, O Lord, and encourage growth in our spiritual lives, that we would come to know you better and trust you more deeply. As the summer season continues and steady growth is occurring in the fields and on our farms and in our gardens, let our hearts be open to your word, working within us that we would experience steady growth of faith in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. For our children, God of grace, you adopted Israel as your chosen people, and your love for them abides forever. Through Jesus, we have been grafted into your holy family. May your people everywhere receive the good news of Christ in ways that transform, in ways that unite. For we know that through Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, but only those whom you love and call by name. Lord, in your mercy, for the sick and for the hurting. God of all mercy, your tender care is evidenced in your healing power. Grant your mercy to those who are in need this day, the wounded, the lonely, the oppressed, and the sick. We remember particularly those who are struggling with, cereals, with serious trials, those who are recovering, for those who are receiving treatments, and those with COVID-19 and their families. Grant your strength to the weak and hope to the hopeless, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would be with the unique and the personal needs of those on our prayer list. We celebrate, Lord, with the, great, with the birth of Grayson Lloyd Watts. We ask that you would be with that family as they grow and as that child grows as well. We ask that you would be with all families especially those who are returning to college in the next couple of weeks and to those who are entering for the first time. Many in our congregation, Lord, are touched by students and by all those connected. We ask that you would lift them up in your grace and ease their hearts in the midst of transition. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely into this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power so that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, we praise you for all the wonders you have made and for your all-sustaining care. Receive our offerings this morning from our thankful hearts, and may our lives reflect the goodness and love shown in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My longing, my father yells with doom. 
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon each of you with his favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We, we will. will. Thanks be to God.